Hello everybody and welcome to our new segment called Jew It Yourself where I'm going to talk about how to do things as a Jew um, by yourself or on your own doing uh, recipes from scratch or taking care of other uh, obligations um, without the support of a community. Um, and then my nephew, Andrew, back in America, he's going to actually try to carry out some of the instructions that I give you all. And we should be able to see how effective my instructions are that way. But right now, with Passover quickly approaching, I thought, especially given and everybody being locked up and uh, isolated, uh, that maybe we should go over some ideas for preparing for Passover. And even for those of you who maybe haven't been so observant in the past, this can be maybe an interesting way to pass some time with, with your family. All right. So one thing first as we go forward, I want to point out that we're going to be adapting most of our methods for preparation for for uh, for Passover from this Kitsur Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch is the collection of uh, of the daily rules that we all have to follow as Jew as Jews. Now there's two volumes and what's nice about this one is that is that okay it's set up like any book in Hebrew but it's got Hebrew on one side and English on the other. So it's pretty easy for anybody to follow what's going along. And the first time I saw this book was when I was living in Japan and I saw it at the synagogue and I studied a lot about us, uh, studied a lot out of it then. And now that I've moved to Italy, I ordered one on Amazon and it should be pretty easy to get anywhere in the continental United States through Amazon that way, if you're so inclined. But most importantly, is that we can open up right to the section for the month of Nisan, which is the month when Passover takes place on the 15th, how to prepare for Passover, and uh, and things that are important for Passover. And one of the first things that I wanted to talk about was how to make matzah. Now, when we look at these rules, we need to understand that they were made for an agrarian society. And there were things about the environment and things about the, uh, the, where people lived and how they lived that made observance of these rules uh, easier as they're written here. And what we'll try to do, I'll try my best to fulfill the letter of the law as I go down, but uh, at the same time, we'll discuss ways to adapt these rules for city living and maybe living under quarantine, all right? So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just get in and I'll go step by step and we'll learn about how to make matzah. Okay, so one of the first steps is collecting water, right? And so I've come to my friend's farm where he's got this natural well. Now, one of the rules is the water should be natural, either from a river or from a well. And uh, with this little fountain that comes out of the, 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 the mountainside here, my friend uses this water to, to, to farm with. So here I am taking water right out of the mountainside. And we'll talk more about that and why we ought to get natural water and what to do with it afterwards. Okay, so there's a couple things to talk about here. First is the time of day. The best time of day to be taking your water is during twilight. 
It's allowed to take the water a bit before twilight, but not after sunset. This is because you want the water to rest overnight. After we take the water, we're going to filter it and leave it in a cool place. And uh, then we can use it the next morning after 12 hours of resting minimum. Okay. So the other thing is what kind of containers to use. I prefer glass because glass is easy to clean. Um, we can't have any kind of container that might have had bread products or other kind of food that was in it that might somehow place chametz or leavening into the water that we're that we're taking there's a very huge stringency for keeping the water pure in that way so glass easy to clean if you want to clean your glass you just do it with boiled water and dump it out and now you're ready to go all right so here we go it's just around twilight we're gonna go and get our water from the natural source in pure jugs of water the other thing as we think about this we can talk about some other rules. Here we are at the source here. So as I get this water into my jug, and just do a quick rinse. So why river water? Why well water? Well, again, these rules were, were done in a time or made in a time when the society was more agricultural. And well water and river water is considered pure because it's never been used to work. Now, the next thing is that you want the water to be really cold. This time of year in Israel, the runoff water in the river is ideal because yesterday it was snow. If the, if, if the water is colder in the well, that's fine too. The idea is cold water will reduce the amount of time or the amount of uh, leavening that happens when we use it to knead the dough into matzot. Okay, so there's that aspect. The, the other thing is that we strain it, we store it overnight to keep it cool. And yeah, that's, that's about the most of it. Um, now, if you think about being isolated in a city, you can't get to a well. You can't, or maybe you live where you have water from the well. That's great. If you can't get to a river, or today rivers are dirty, right? You don't have this great mountain water. The, the only option that we really have is to draw the water from our local water system. And uh, it's not great, but if you draw it, strain it out, store it in a cold place overnight, at least you're observing some sort of rule and getting ready, thinking about making the matzah before you're actually doing it. And a lot of these rules have to do with intention and preparation. There's a spiritual preparation in making matzah and getting ready for Passover. You just don't show up to the table and start eating. You spend a week or two cleaning the house, getting things ready, preparing, preparing your, your, your meal. And that way, Passover or Pasqua, uh, Pesach becomes a, uh, a, uh, a meaningful holiday for us. All right? So if you have any questions about water and what to do with water, the best place to talk to, if you can't get matzah commercially, talk to a, a rabbi. And, or at the very least, you can leave a comment or a question below. Another couple of rules is that ideally, you should only draw the water that you need for the next day. But that's not strict. Uh, you can draw more water than you need. These uh, 10 liters of water is more than what I'm gonna need to do the matzot for me and my family, and that's fine. Let's say you didn't draw enough water and you notice that you don't have enough water to do all your matzot. It's okay to add some other water from another source so long as the majority of your water was drawn with the intention to do so. Um, and um, the, other, the only other thing that I can think of right now is that we should, it should be drawn by a Jew. 
there are some exceptions. Let's say you're gonna do the work on Sunday, you can't draw water on Shabbat. In that case, you should be drawing the water before Shabbat starts and leaving it more than two days, more than overnight. Um, or you could have a non-Jew draw water in general and you get the water from him. Make sure that you're not asking the non-Jew to do something specifically for you because that's a violation of Shabbat. Um, the last thing that I wanted to, to remember is that as we're doing things specifically for that matzah that we're going to use that first night or the first two nights, we, we, should, uh, we should declare our intention. We were talking about intention. We should really declare our intention uh, for making the matzah with each step along the way. And uh, we just got our water, so I should be saying uh, Leshem Matzah Mitzvah, okay? That this is in the name of the, of the mitzvot for the matzah. Okay, so here I am, back in my house, and I've got my spring water here, and I'm just gonna give it a quick filter into this other receptacle and use a metal funnel because it's been keshered. And that means that there's no possibility for chametz or leavening to be in this, in this funnel. Um, by keshering it, I've boiled it in water. And we can, we'll do that in another video to talk about keshering. And it's the same thing that I've done with these receptacles is that I've made sure that they are, they are pure, ritually pure, through the keshering process, right? So, I mean, really, this is kind of an excessive case here, but just to demonstrate the rules of perhaps filtering the water before we store it in the cool place, this is uh, this is how we would do it. That's what I'm going to do it. All right, and I've done. I'll do that with both of these. Uh, five liter jugs of water. And then after that, now that that's finished, I'm gonna just pop my cap back on here and I will put it away in this refrigerator for safekeeping overnight, remembering to not use it for at least 12 hours overnight. All right, so that gets us ready with our water. Okay, so in this episode of Do It Yourself, we basically just covered how to collect water to make matzah. We got all of our rules here from the Kitzur Shulchan Ruch. Like I said, you can find it on Amazon and can be delivered anywhere in the United States. Um, and I also found a link that I will post below here uh, for Chabad. Chabad is a great resource. It's a, it's a Hasidic uh, Jewish organization, and they they really have a great mission of outreach to Jews. They just want to help Jews do Jewish things, whether you're a member of Chabad or not. And on their website, they have a full uh, English Hebrew translation of the Kitzur Shochan Aruch. So if you want to double check some of the rules before you go out and do something that you learn here on one of my videos, it's, uh, yeah, it's available and it's free without having to buy anything off of Amazon. All right, so next episodes, in the next episodes, like I said, we're gonna look at purifying our vessels, our implements. We're gonna look at cleaning the house. We're gonna look at how to make the matzah. We're also gonna look at how to prepare the Seder plate and uh, get ready for, uh, for Passover night. All right, great. Uh, have a good time getting ready. I hope this gives you something interesting to do during, uh, during these days. And uh, yeah, uh, Pesach Sameach.